Amen, amen, and amen. Blessed day to you, wherever you are under the sound of my voice. I'm bringing you fit moment, <clears throat> a platform, and a time where we study the word of God and um, come to the place of understanding in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Come with me to, um, um, to a time of understanding God's word understanding God's word amen the Bible can be understood the Bible can be understood and so wherever you are I want you to um, uh, invite somebody please do me a favor touch somebody this morning be a blessing to somebody even as we share the word of God amen all right let's have a word of prayer our Heavenly Father this morning we are giving you the praise glory and honor we thank you for another opportunity that you have given unto us. This is the day, Lord, you have made. And we will be careful to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen and amen. Amen. If you are just joining me right now, uh, we want to talk about understanding the Bible, or the Bible can be understood. <clears throat> the Bible can be understood. We've been dealing about learning to hear God through the word, learning to hear God through his word. Beloved, the only way God will speak to you and me is through his word. And so it's very important that we study the word of God so that we can hear and also understand exactly what God is telling you and me in his word. I just want to remind you that... Um, when you pray to God, you speak to God, and when you read his word, God speaks to you. When you pray to God, you speak to God. You, commute, you communicate with God, and God communicates with you or to you through his word. And so it's very important and paramount that you study the word of God so that you can hear from God what God is saying to you. Amen. Today we want to talk about the the the, uh, the, the importance of um, uh, of bringing you to the place to understand that the Bible can be understood. The Bible can be understood, beloved. Uh, don't believe you know. I mean, many people you know say that the Bible is difficult to understand. Well, the author has given um, his principle or guidelines as to how to read and understand his word and so we need to follow that guidelines and the principles so that we can understand what he is saying all right if we don't do that we will not understand what god is saying we will not understand what god is saying so we need to come to that place of understanding his principles all right that which he has put in place for you and i to come to the place of hearing uh, from him and that is through his word and by studying his word the holy spirit his spirit helps us to understand um you know i often say that uh, the bible is very simple to understand you just need the devil, devil to help you misunderstand it <laughs> you need the devil to help you misunderstand the word of god the word of god is simple to understand why? Because his spirit brings you and I to that place of understanding. But if we don't understand, it's as a result of us not positioning ourselves for the Holy Spirit to help us. Don't just pick up the word of God and start reading. All right. You may you will not understand. It. You need to position yourself to um, um, understand the word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Come with me to uh, the book of Luke, chapter 24. Luke 24. Luke 24. Uh, we'll be reading from this 45th verse. Luke chapter 24. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Luke chapter 24. That's, that's just about um, the last book of Luke. 
okay the last book of luke look at um, verse 44 let's read from verse 44 take it from here then jesus said to them these are could jesus said to them these are the words which i spoke to you while i was still with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of moses and the prophets and the psalms concerning me these are these are the things which was spoken or which these are the words uh, which i spoke to you while i was with you jesus was speaking to the disciples concerning the great commission and that is to go ye into all nations um you know with the word of god now he says these are the words which i spoke to you while i was still with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of moses and the prophets and the psalms concerning me look at the, uh, verse 45 he says that and he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures he opened their understanding he opened their understanding jesus opened the understanding so that they can understand or comprehend the scriptures he opened the understanding beloved you your understanding must be open all right to in the knowledge of him he opened the understanding that they might understand or comprehend the scriptures all right many many people see the bible as a puzzle many see the bible as a puzzle some people have a hard time uh in reading and uh and for that reason they, they they don't even read it at all um often often times of course uh the flesh that wars against the things of the spirit uh will let you just give up in reading the word of god okay i want you to also understand uh, understand that uh, the bible can be understood but it doesn't take the flesh to help you understand the word of god god is a spirit and the scripture, the scripture says that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the 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 spirit the spiritual author, okay, one must understand his book by the spirit. All right, you must understand the word of God by the spirit. And which spirit will help you understand the holy spirit we'll find out as we as we read along we'll find out all right most often like i said uh, many people make excuses um you know uh, because of their carnal mindset you cannot read a bible with your carnal mindset you cannot do that all right because the things in the word first of all yesterday we we, we spoke about the fact that the Bible is an inspired word of God. It's an inspired word of God. God inspired his men to speak it about it and to write about it. All right. God inspired his people to do that. Hey, Kojo, God bless you. All right. God inspired his people to speak and to write what we call the bible and so when it comes to reading the word for you to understand or hear what god is saying to you you must rely on the spirit of god else you will never understand that you cannot just be reading the bible you can read read it with your with your kind of mindset and understand it and most people say that when they pick up the bible it's too complicated to understand and therefore they just put it away and go about their business well when the flesh is is constantly warring or fighting against the things of the spirit you cannot understand the things of the spirit with your carnal mind and 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 bible is full of mysteries <laughs> it's full of mysteries are you listening to to me uh good evening to you um Gulison or Gulson, God bless you, and Kojo, God bless you too. All right, so you cannot just understand the word of God 
by reading it, you know, just picking it and reading it like a newspaper or any ordinary book. No, you can't. When you do that, first of all, watch this now. When you pray to God, all right, you when you speak to God, you pray to God, you communicate with God. Now, for God to communicate with you is through his word. And so if you don't study his word, spend time in his word, how is he going to communicate with you? And uh, and and I, many people, like I said, have have this mindset that Bible is a puzzle and and uh, is difficult to understand, and and therefore they just put it away and and all that, you know, put it on a shelf somewhere. That for years they haven't even picked up their Bibles to read. And if you do that, what you are going to do is that you position yourself for other people to talk to you, and say that that says yes, the Lord. Now, how do you know that indeed that is that is that is God speaking to you through them? <clears throat> how do you know? So it's very important for you to, um, you know, uh, read the word. Now, the, again, the Bible can be understood. You can understand the Bible. The only way you're going, you're not going to understand the Bible is for is uh, to to get an assistance of the devil to help you misunderstand the Bible. That's the only way. But if not, you will understand the Bible. Amen. All right. Now, another way you will not understand the Bible, or you will, you you cannot understand the Bible, is when you is if you have not, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Listen. The reason why I say this is because through Him. Okay, the Bible is a guideline, it's man's guideline to God through Jesus by the Holy Spirit. And so if you don't have that relationship with him, there ain't no way you're gonna you're, you're gonna get it. I are you are you getting what I'm saying? You, there's no way you're gonna get it. It would it wouldn't make sense to you. It would not make sense to you. But beloved, this is how God speaks to his people. And so we need to be very serious about, about reading the word of God so that we can hear from God. We got to do this. If you don't do this, you will not be hearing from God. You will hear it from, you know, a third, a third person or fourth person or somebody speaking to you. By the time the real, I mean, the message comes to you, it's it's no longer it doesn't carry that effectiveness are you listening so you must so we we are talking about the fact that you can understand the bible or the bible can be understood but the only way you can understand it is for you to read it is to read it man through his own wisdom does not know god man through his own wisdom does not know god you cannot know God by, by reasoning. No, you cannot know God by reasoning. Man simply cannot, through his own intel intelligence, um, you know, um, um, save himself. You can't do that. All right, let's read some scripture to you know battle what we are saying here. First Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty-one. First Corinthians chapter one. We see. That that there, First Corinthians chapter one verse twenty one. <clears throat> Come with me. I'm taking my time to, you know, speak to you concerning this word of God instead of just preaching and running and screaming and all that. No, I want you to follow me and have an understanding. First Corinthians chapter one. All right. First Corinthians chapter one. Are you there? Verse 21. Look at verse 21. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. Now it says, okay, let's read from verse um verse 18. Verse 18, but the punchline is 21. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Again, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, verse 19, it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise 
and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world drew wisdom that did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to those to save those who believe. All right, again, it says, For since, verse 21, for since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. Did not know God. It pleased God, therefore, through the foolishness of the message to them, preach to save those who believe. So in other words, you cannot make sense out of the word of God through your, your, your human reasoning. It, 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 it cannot, you can't. You can't make sense out of it because God is God. Okay, that is another area I often say that we most people haven't come to realize who He is. He is God, and He takes the Bible says that He takes the foolish things to confound the wise. And so, when it comes to the things of God, that most of the time it doesn't make sense, and that is why when you pick up the Bible. And with your, with your, with your, uh, to intelli in, to to make intelligence out of it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Why? Because God does not. The face of God doesn't make sense to the carnal mind. We're talking about spiritual stuff. God is a spirit, and so when it comes to the spiritual things, it doesn't make sense to the carnal mind or just the regular way of thinking it doesn't make sense beloved don't try to make sense out of god okay do yourself a, va a favor by 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 acknowledging his sovereignty do yourself that favor by acknowledging his sovereignty he is god he does what he please he doesn't need nobody's permission to do what he want to do and so the things of God doesn't make sense. And I believe some of you have heard that. Or, or, or most of the, or the time you pick up the Bible, it's like, man, I don't, man, this thing don't make no sense. Well, it wouldn't make sense to you because you are approaching it with your intelligence, with your kind of way of thinking. You are not seeing that you are coming to hear from a spiritual being. The author of this book is a spirit. He's a spirit. <laughs> Are you listening to me? So it wouldn't make sense if you approach the Bible this way. And so again, look at it here, and I love this. He says, the message of the cross, the cross of Jesus, the finished work, all right, is foolishness to those who are perishing. The world is a place, I mean, the world is perishing, we know that. Okay? Is foolishness, but to us who are being saved. So you realize so what 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 this means is that the word of God, the word of God, does not make sense to the unbeliever. That's what it means. It means the word of God doesn't make sense to the unbeliever. To the unbeliever, the word of God doesn't make sense to the unbeliever because again. Look at it, I, and, and let me read it from verse 18. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Verse 20 says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Where, where he, is, he is concerned. Are you listening? It pleased God through the foolishness of 
the message preached to save those who perish. It pleased God. Okay, it pleased God. So therefore, therefore, you have to understand that you cannot, beloved, you just cannot understand the things of God with your carnal and intellectual mindset. You cannot. It doesn't make sense. It wouldn't make sense to you, and it doesn't make sense. Are you listening? So, so uh, you know, let, let's get that straight. So when we talk about un understanding the Bible, or the Bible can be understood, I I'm, I'm letting you understand that. For you to understand it, you must put on your spiritual cup. You got to put on your spiritual reason, re spiritual cap. Let me put it that will make it simple for you. If not, you cannot understand that. All right? You cannot. Man cannot, uh, simply cannot, um, through his own intelligence, uh, save himself. All right? Now, only those who are born of the Spirit, therefore, can understand the Word of God. Only those who are born of the spirit therefore in other words those who are born again you must be born again come to um um look at chapter uh we're still in in first corinthians look at verse 19 let me look at look at 19 what 19 says for it is written i will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent are you listening look at it i will destroy the wisdom of the wise beloved you, you only those who are born of the spirit can understand that matthew um no john chapter 3 <clears throat> excuse me john chapter 3 come come with me to john chapter 3 let's see something here that might help what we are talking about john chapter 3 john chapter 3 Look at verse 5. Let's read verse 5. Verse 6 is a punchline. And Jesus answered, he said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. <clears throat> verse 6 says, that which, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Are you listening? So when it comes to the things of God, <clears throat> When it comes to the things of God, you cannot understand it with your fleshly way of seeing things. You cannot understand it. When it comes to the things of God, you cannot understand with your with your with, with the flesh, with the way you see things, you the way you you feel things, and you the way you you receive things. No, you cannot do that. Are you listening? And so it's very important that we we understand this. <clears throat> Excuse me. If not, we will be very frustrated by picking the Bible to read. And that is why a lot of people don't read the Bible. If, I mean, if you'll be surprised going to church and finding out that a lot of people are not even carrying their Bibles with them. Because first of all, you haven't developed a relationship with your Bible. And so you don't even carry it. And for this, you know, modern day age technology, you have, you have downloaded Bible, you know, in your on your phone on your phone. The other day, somebody you know posted something that I thought was interesting. That if um, a thief want to steal <clears throat> both your Bible and your phone together, which one do you think they will pick up? And um, the, the poll shows that. A majority says that you know the thief will pick up your 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 phone, and so if the thief picks up your phone, he he goes with your Bible. What what do you have to read? Meanwhile, you have not developed a relationship with the Word of God, all right. And so you don't you you wouldn't be able to even even stand on anything because you don't read the Bible first of all. You only carry it with you and in 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 church or. When you go to church and when a scripture is, is quoted, then you open it on your phone to look at it. Beloved, that is not, the, I mean, 
you you cannot you can't grow like that you cannot grow in the things of god like that and you cannot also hear from god like that no you can't and so go to your you know where you have you have um, you know left the, the last place you left your bible go and pick it up dust the you know the uh, clean the dust off it and start reading are you listening you have to do that if you don't do that beloved you're not going to hear from god directly you'll be depending on other people to tell you that says the lord there's nothing wrong with that but you must be the first person god want to talk to you god want to talk to you god doesn't want to talk to you through nobody else god want to talk to you now if you want to say well god how about the holy spirit well god if, now how are you going to even have a relationship with the holy spirit you don't you don't you don't read the word of god are you listening so it's very important we understand this things if not if not we will be missing out and be depending on other people to tell us what god is saying so here again listen to what jesus says in john chapter 3 5 and 6 he said jesus answered he says most assuredly i say to you unless one is born of water and the spirit <clears throat> the water referring to the baptism which we have we have uh, treated you know that subject the importance of being baptized in immersion in water all right not sprinkling of water on you no the importance of that we've dealt with that already so please um you know go to the youtube and um, download these messages they are free of charge for you Go to Patrick Quinn on YouTube, Patrick Quinn Ministries, and download these messages. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, um, watch this now. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless verse five, unless, um, unless I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Unless one is born of water and the spirit, what spirit? The spirit of God. The spirit of God, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Verse 6 says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And so you cannot use fleshly things to comprehend spiritual things. Does that make sense? Yes. You cannot use fleshly things to comprehend spiritual things. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and which is born of the spirit is spirit. So if you want to understand spiritual things or to hear from God who is a spirit and to, to, to um, understand his word, the Bible, you must approach it with your spiritual cup that which is born of the of the of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit jesus says that and so that is for you to understand that uh, when it comes to the things of god or when it comes to understanding the bible the bible can be understood it can yes you can only misunderstand the bible by the help of of uh, the flesh and the one who handles the things of the flesh which was against the spirit is satan all right so again only those who are born of the spirit um can understand the things of the spirit now um look at chapter chapter two first corinthians chapter two let's see what um that scripture says to us as well chapter two verse um chapter 2 verse 1 first corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 and this is why it's very important that for you to understand the word of god again you need the help of the holy spirit jesus says that which is born of the flesh is flesh and the things of the spirit is by the spirit and we are going to see where the it's the spirit of god uh, is the one who will help you 
to understand the things of God through his word. If not, you can read the Bible and it wouldn't make no sense to you. And you'll be frustrated and just throw it away somewhere. Verse 1 says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, this is um, um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. When I came to you, um, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. I didn't come with an excellence of speech, okay? I did not come with an excellence of speech uh, or trying to, um, you know, sound, you know, superficial to you. I came with, I came to you to make sense of that which is of the spirit to you, if you will. Okay. Now look at verse, um, verse six again. Look at verse six. It says. Uh, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Wisdom is spoken to those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age. No, about the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Okay? Verse 7 says, but we speak the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God in a mystery. The wisdom of God in a mystery the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Like I said earlier, the Bible is full of, of mysteries. The wisdom of God. Now, how do you come to know the things of God? How, how, how do you come to know or hear when God is speaking to you? I'll show you why. Look at it. Look at verse 8. Um, verse 7, sorry. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for they had known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I had not seen or ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for those who love him. But watch this now. Verse 10 says, But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. Now, for you to know the things of, the, of God or to, for you to understand the word of God is through his spirit. God has put, you know, the author has put guidelines of how to understand his word, his book, the inspired word of God. In place for you to understand it you must follow the guidelines and so again I, I i am i am positive to say that the unbelievers cannot understand the word of god unbelievers no those who are born again spirit filled can why because it takes the spirit of god to bring the understanding of the spiritual author to your understanding. Am I making sense to you? Okay, let me break it down for you. Now, it takes the spirit of the author to reveal what the author wants you to get or understand to you through your spirit and so if you you are not in alignment and that is by being born again by being positioned by the spirit you cannot understand the author's book that is a bible you cannot understand it you can't understand it now Look at it, verse 10, it says, But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Yes, the deep things of God. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For what man, verse 11 says, For what man knows the things of a man, except the Spirit of a man which is in him? What man, what do you... Look at it again. For what man knows 
the things of man except the spirit of man of the man which is in him except the spirit of the man which is in him what what spirit is in you is that the spirit of god or the spirit of antichrist so if you don't have the spirit of god in you how can you understand the things of god are you getting the revelation here if you don't have the spirit of god in you how can you then understand the things of god you can how can you understand the author of this book who is a spirit you you get you i mean this 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 makes just a common sense so for you to understand this for you to understand and again don't tell me i'm trying to help you to understand that the bible a bible can be understood the bible can be understood okay for what look at verse 11 again first corinthians chapter 2 look at verse 11 <clears throat> For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, watch this now, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. No one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So without the spirit of God in you, you cannot, you cannot comprehend the things of God. <clears throat> Amen? You cannot. I mean, you tell me what other way you're going to listen. You're going to hear the, or understand the things of God. And this is why many are just not reading the word of God and depending on others to tell them that says the Lord. When you pray to God, you speak to God. When you read his word, God speaks to you. So why are you not positioning yourself for God to speak to you? God wants is, God is speaking to you. God wants to have a relationship with you. <clears throat> All right? Bible says that God came in the cool of the day to have a fellowship with his man, Adam. Why do you think God created you? Just, you know, to leave you on the face of this earth? And all? No. He created you for his purpose. God created you for his purpose. To have a fellowship with you all right god god wants to have a fellowship with you but you are you haven't you have not positioned yourself for that however you are crying to him in the day of your trouble you are crying and screaming god where are you and all that but you haven't developed a relationship with him he's there he hasn't gone anywhere most of the time like i said God hasn't traveled. God hasn't traveled anywhere. It's you who have distanced yourself from him. And when you distance yourself from him, you will not understand the Bible. That is why you're not reading your word. That's why you're not. Well, I mean, you don't even remember that where the, la the last time you opened your Bible. Yeah, because you are, you are far away from him. All right, watch this now. Even so, oh, I love this. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have, verse 12 says, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God. We have not received the Spirit of the world, of this world, but the Spirit who is from God? Who is the Spirit from God? Who is this Spirit? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So without you engaging the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit dwelling in, with you and in you, how can you understand the things of God? And God is a Spirit, the Bible says. They that worship Him must worship Him in Spirit, not in the flesh, not with your intelligence, not with your carnal way of thinking. You must put on your spiritual cap. 
If not, you cannot understand spiritual things. You remember the other day, Nicodemus, the Bible says, uh, this, this intellectual you know, guy came to Jesus. He didn't even want nobody to see him coming. And came to Jesus and, and says, Jesus, no one can do the things that you, you know, we've seen you do, except you were sent from, by God. He was sent from God. And, um, and uh, you know, uh, in the course of the dialogue, he says, but how can one be born again? How can one, you know, grown up, go back to his mother's womb and be born again? See, he was, he was trying to understand the things of God by his intellectual way of thinking. Intellectual way of thinking. The Bible said, we just read that the things of God does not make sense. It's foolishness. To the world to the flesh the things of god does not make no sense doesn't make any sense doesn't make any sense no we see so many examples in the word of god in this in the bible this this bible that can be understood by the spiritual cats not with you know unbelieving cats you cannot understand it there's so many people you know, the Bible didn't make sense to them. Or the things of God did not make sense to them. It didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. I mean, the things of God, beloved, oh, doesn't make sense. So watch this now. He says, now we have received not the spirit, verse 12, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given by God. We might know. How can we know the things of God without the Holy Spirit? How can we know the things of God? We cannot know the things of God. You cannot know the things of God if you don't put on your spiritual cap you cannot it doesn't make sense it would not make sense to you and so if you are not reading your bible if you are not reading your word you need to take an inventory to see where you are where god is concerned if it's difficult for you to pick up your bible and read Jesus said the other day that the kingdom is a spiritual one and only spiritual people can know it. <laughs> yeah, he's right. Only spiritual people can know that which God has said and he's saying and will say. So if you are not a spiritual person, Religious people, that's, they, listen, religious people don't understand the word of God. We cannot understand. We can't. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us the understanding. So you can, you, listen, the re, I'm trying to help somebody that the reason why the Bible is difficult for you to read because you don't understand it. And then for that reason, you put it somewhere and, and but you call yourself a Christian because, well, you believe, you know, it's because you have not developed that relationship. You speak to God by your prayer. God speaks to you through his word. So if you are not hearing from, uh, from God, obviously you are not reading his word. You are not reading his word. And so it's very important. Jesus, the Bible talks about them uh, when uh, these uh, uh, two disciples were walking, uh, you know, Eremios, if you remember that. And uh, Jesus, the Bible said, Jesus opened the understanding. He opened their understanding. It takes the spirit of God to do that. It takes the spirit of God to do that. Come with me to Matthew chapter uh, 11, Matthew chapter 11. Let's look at Matthew, the 11th chapter. We'll come back to uh, Corinthians. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew, the 11th chapter. 
Let me show you something. Matthew chapter 11, verse um, 25. Matthew chapter 11, look at verse 25. At a time Jesus, at that time Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. <laughs> All right. He says, you have hidden this from the worldly wisdom and you have revealed them to babes. Who are the babes you got? Uh, Jesus was referring to. He says, look at verse 26. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. Even so, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son. And he, and he to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you have. You come to me, therefore, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Jesus is, is was was revealing to you and me. Okay, the way to God by the Spirit. We cannot, beloved. I, I, I can't stress this enough. You cannot understand the things of God or the or know the ways of God with your intellect with your with, with your human reasoning are you listening to me it doesn't make sense it does not make sense Come, look at it again in the, in in first um um first corinthians chapter 2 look at it again verse verse um 10 says but God has revealed them to us. You want to know the things of God is revealed to you through his spirit. His spirit, not your intellect. The things of God is revealed through the spirit of God. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Verse 11 says, for what man knows the things of a man? What man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Beloved, without that, you cannot. Watch this now, verse 12 again. Now we have received not the spirit of the world by the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that God has given to us through His Spirit, not through your intelligence, not through your education, not through your... Do you, do you realize why, why the educated people were marveled about the, 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 uh, um, the ministry of the disciples? When they were out there, they, they, when they arrested um, Peter and John, they said, we know that these people are not educated. So how are they able to do the things that we educated and not people are educated are not able to do? Because God, it, listen, it's good to educate yourself through school or what have you. I often say, you know, say some of you, my, your, um, this young guy's um, uh, spiritual sons and daughters, I, listen, Going to Bible school doesn't make it. Going to Bible school does not make you a preacher. Doesn't make you a pastor. So I know people who have gone to Bible just, just so that they can enhance their understanding about the word. Are you listening? What Bible school did um, Peter and John and these guys go to? I'm not saying that it's not good for you to do that. Yes, you can. You have to educate yourself. But I don't want you to, you know, think that, um, you know, by 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 going to Bible school, you can you can you can go to Bible school and and not have the Holy Spirit to help you understand the Word of God. Are you listening to me? 
And so you, we, we got to understand this. It takes the Holy Spirit to help you understand. Remember what Jesus said to, uh, to you and I, through the disciples, uh, that uh, we must receive the Holy Spirit so that we can understand the things of God, beloved. You cannot understand the things of God without the Holy Spirit. Look at look at verse um, verse um, look at verse twelve again. First Corinthians chapter two verse twelve. Look at it again. Now we have received not a spirit of the world. We have not received the spirit of the world. And that is those who are born again. Those who are who have come to be born again by receiving Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. The things that have been freely given to us by God. Why are you depending on other people to tell you that says the Lord? It's been freely given. You have not received it because you have not received God and His Word. Verse 13. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, com teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The Holy Spirit teaches so if you want to know and understand the Bible, which is easy to understand and can't be understood, you need the Holy Spirit to do that. And that is why it's so important for you to receive the Holy Spirit. If you haven't received the Holy Spirit, how are you going to know? How are you going to know? You tell me. And so if you have throw your Bible away somewhere because it's difficult to understand, it's boring, and all those excuses that you make is as a result of the fact that you have not received the Holy Spirit. You cannot put this book down. I'm telling you, you cannot put the Bible down a day without picking. You, you just can't. I mean, you want to know what, what, what God is saying. You want to know. And beloved, there's no shortcut. Are you listening to me? Everything concerning your life is in the Word. God created you. Now, now let's try to even make just a fleshly sense. God created you. All right? And the legal point to this earth is through the womb of a woman. So God chose a woman, whoever that person is, and brought you. Listen, women don't have seed. So God took a seed from a man, okay, through the womb of a woman and, and, and brought you. Now how, listen, medical research and science have not even come to know how human beings are made. Now, they, we know about the sperm of a man coming into or, or getting with the, the, the egg of a woman and blah, 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 blah. But how that's, you know, you are formed there, that's another, that's a mystery. Now, you came through the legal entry through of a woman to this earth. Okay? Now, God has his own plans for creating you. Okay? God has his own plans. I was sharing with um, a sister the other day. I said, isn't that interesting that most of the time, um, parents, you know, we have plans for our kids. Or we want it, we, I want my boy to be a doctor. I want my girl to be, you know, uh, this. I want my, yeah, but we forget that they were created by God. As we were created by God. And God has his own plan and purpose for our lives. Are you listening? So instead of us manufacturing something um, concerning them, I think it's proper that we go to God and ask them what, do you have concerning this child? Jesus, at the age of 12, the Bible says, 
knew exactly what he was born to do. Remember, his um, mother, brothers, other, I think, father, um, uh, Joseph, earthly father, they were looking for him. They found him in the synagogue. They were looking for him all over the place. And when he found him, he said, son, why have you done this to us? We thought you, you were with us when we were going home and all that. No. They, had, they may have their own plans concerning him. But at the age of 12, Jesus knew exactly what his purpose was on the face of this earth. He says, don't you know I must be about my father's business? He told her, he told her mother. Don't you know I must be about my father's business? And so for you to even come to know exactly what you were created to do, you must know that by the Spirit. All right, we'll, get, we'll come there to come to that place again. So I, I'm trying to establish the importance of knowing the things of God and also hearing from God through His Word. And that if you don't study the Word, if you don't read the Word of God, you will not hear from God exactly what God wants to say to, say to you and you will not even understand the things of God. Are you listening? So it is important that we do that. God, Jesus, Bible says, He opened the word to them. The two disciples, when they walked with, um, with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Okay? So, so here in, um, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I want you to take your time and read from verse 1 down, but I wanted to bring this to you. Watch this again. Verse 13 says, These things we also speak not in words, which man's work. These things, let me take it again. These things we also speak not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, verse 14 says, Watch this now. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You cannot understand the Word of God. Many people are swaying or getting away from the things of God because they don't understand. It doesn't make sense to them. You know why? Because they are receiving it with their carnal mindset. You can be sick. The reason why some people are not even going to church is because of that. Because you go to church and it's like, man, I don't, you know, I like the music. Um, I, I like the music and, uh, you know, but I, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand. Well, how are you going to understand that which you cannot receive it with your carnal mindset? God is a spirit. Look at the formula he has given to anybody who wants to serve and worship him. He says, you must worship me in spirit and in truth. In spirit. In spirit, beloved. In spirit. All right? In spirit. So verse 14 again says, but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God. The natural man. You cannot receive the things of God with your intellect with your intellectual way of thinking. You cannot. You cannot. You know, it's so interesting. I, I have come to realize that this, you know, this teachings does not attract a lot of people. You know why? Because we, we most people are not spiritual. They are religious. They have a, a you know, a form of godliness. But they don't have that spiritual clothes on. They don't have that spiritual caps on. And so therefore, you'll be surprised to find out that a lot of people who go to church don't even read their Bibles. No, they don't. Mm -mm. It's about what the preacher says. They take it and they go. Now, what a, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, mindset of mind frame in which the preacher is bringing the word is what they receive, and that's it. They go about their business. 
But in a time of challenge, what do you have to stand on? Since you don't have any personal experience or personal encounter or personal relationship, what do you have to stand on? What do you have to stand on? Oh my goodness. Verse 14. But a natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. They are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but have the mind of Christ? Are you listening? Have the mind of Christ. So, beloved, you cannot come to that place of understanding the things of God without the Spirit of God dwelling and in you, dwelling with you and being in you. You cannot receive it. Okay, the Bible says that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, identifies with the things of God. The Holy Spirit identifies with the things of God. So if the Holy Spirit is in you, all right, He will let you see, He will let you understand, He will let you hear, and He will let you understand the things of God. Without the Holy Spirit, beloved, nah, you cannot. You it yes, it, it will make some kind of sense to you, but you will not have the full impact. You wouldn't have the full impact. You won't have the full understanding. And the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 10, down it said, Understanding will keep you. You want to be kept in the times that we are living in, that no, I mean, you don't even know what is next. You want to be kept. Understanding will keep you. Understanding of what? Understanding comes by the Holy Spirit. Giving you a deep understanding of the things of God. Therefore, when you stand, you are standing on a solid ground. You are standing on a solid rock. Your foundation, uh, Psalms 11 verse 3, I believe it says, If the foundation is destroyed, what can even the righteous do? Your, 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 your foundation has to be solid. On what? On by the understanding of God's word through the Holy Spirit. And so again, the Bible is man's guidelines to God through Jesus Christ and by the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus. So you have to have that relationship with Jesus. Make him your Lord and your Savior. Be born again when you, you accept him. And so for you who are who's watching me right now or listening to me, if you have not done that, beloved, you have to do that now. You have to receive Jesus. Make Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Receive him and let his spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus when he, Jesus, was baptized. The Bible says that in, then the Holy Spirit led Jesus. Okay, so the first step Jesus took into his ministry, he was led by the Holy Spirit. So, so if you want to walk with God, you will, you will walk with God by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense to you? Because the Spirit, I want to take you to this place again. Listen to this again. The Spirit of God. Without the Holy Spirit, I am saying to you that you cannot understand the things of God or even hear from God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. Look at it now. Look at it. Take your time and read from verse 1. But I want to read this point line to you. God has revealed all this to us. If you read from verse 9, he says that no eyes have seen nor ear heard the things God has prepared. No eye nor ear heard or seen the things God has prepared for those who love him. Now, 
but God has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things even the deep things of God so and verse um, verse 11 says um, uh, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him even so underline this even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God that is the Holy Spirit no one knows the things of God except the Holy Spirit and so for you to come to know the things of God you must have the Holy Spirit you must engage the Holy Spirit you must activate the, 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 the ministry of the Holy Spirit you must it's a must it's not it's not a suggestion without the Holy Spirit you ain't gonna know nothing period period you ain't got, when I'm talking about when it comes to God speaking to you and what how are you going to know when God is speaking to you or the voice you are hearing it's another voice but not the voice of God Jesus says my people my, my sheep they they know they know my voice they hear me Jesus and that which is not of me, they will not heed to it. You must accept Jesus, make him your Lord and Savior today, and begin to hear from God. If you are that individual, I don't have much time to try to convince you. The Holy Spirit will help you to hear from God but you must take this first step you must take this first step of giving your life to Jesus and making Jesus your Lord and your Savior how do I do that preacher this is how you do it I want you to close your eyes and open your heart to receive Jesus and just and just pray this prayer prayer is you speaking to God all right, prayer is you speaking to God. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this day that I'm alive to hear your word. I am convinced I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. And I'm convinced that you are indeed the Lord. The Bible is our guidelines to God through you and by the Holy Spirit. So Jesus, be the Lord of my life and the Savior of my life. I give my life to you today. I surrender my total life to you today. Make me a disciple of you. In Jesus, your name, I pray and I believe it that you have received me. Amen. If you pray that prayer, that short prayer, that sounds and look like this, and that's nothing yes as you sincerely open your heart to pray that prayer and receive him by faith jesus has received you as well you are born again hallelujah you are born again now if you just did that if you did that uh the next thing i want you to do is for you to get yourself a bible okay get yourself a bible if you don't have one if you do have one but you are not part of any um, of the local assemblies, what we call church. Find one that is Bible believing, Bible teaching church. Why do I say that? Because you want to grow and you want to grow, come to the place of your relationship, solidifying your relationship with God. Okay, it will teach you how to read the Bible, to teach you how to study the Bible, as I'm doing here. Okay, but you can also join me this and every morning, same time from Monday to Friday, even as we study the word of God together. Now, join that uh, church, introduce yourself to the leadership, let them know that you've been born again, you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have given your life to him. They will help you. One thing I want you to ask is that you'll be baptized. Okay, you'll be baptized in water. Ask to be baptized in water. 
Now, when that is done, continue to read your word. If you don't know where to start, look for the, uh, the book of Proverbs and start reading. Start reading. The Holy Spirit will dwell with you and in you and help you to understand even us and guide you. All right. It will guide you to the places in the world where God is speaking to you. Where when God wants to speak to you, the Holy Spirit will lead you to that place. He will. That's his job. That's his job. And um, and and so and so you will come to the place of then developing a relationship with God. You will understand things that you won't worry yourself anymore. Are you listening? You will not worry yourself anymore. So it's very important you do that. And I'm I. I congratulate you for taking this step of faith by receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Your salvation is so important. And I thank God for your life. Now, with that said, with that said, I want you to um, um, you know, go to the website of this ministry, Patrick Quino, www.patrickquinoministries.com dot com all right www.patrickwinnerministries.com and um, there are a lot of information there for you to reach me personally and this ministry okay if you want to make a financial donation to help us so that we can continue to expand uh, you know the the uh, um the ministry through you know um uh, assisting those um who are in need okay the 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 less privilege and all that we are doing that right now as i'm talking to you i've made this uh, announcement that um, we are um um we are we are helping those who are less fortunate okay we are helping those who are less fortunate and um we i need you to uh, join us to do that Okay, let me see something here. So if you are, if you are, if you are, um, if you want, you want to team up with us, please do that. All the information uh, for you to do that is on the website, or um, uh, you can get that from the from the website again. I want you to um, be part of what God is doing, but most importantly, to hear from God through his word, through his word. Well, same time, when I come back to you, share this broadcast to your loved ones, spread the gospel, join me to do that, okay? I want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all that getting, get understanding.